Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rob Bolden. I'm the artistic administrator for Pittsburgh Opera, and welcome back to Pull Back the Curtain, episode six in this series that we launched a few weeks ago. If you are tuning in for the first time, thank you so much for being with us. If you are uh, someone who's been with us in the past, then thanks so much for returning. We are happy you're here with us today. We've got a great show, but before we start, as always, I want to thank our corporate sponsor, our corporate pa partnership this week, Eaton Park. Um, it is absolutely the place for smiles with their legendary smiley face cookie. And I would like to say that Pull Back the Curtain should also be the place for smiles and is the place for smiles. So welcome, thank you to Eaton Park for your sponsorship. Again, as I always say, it is because of corporate sponsors like you, it enables us to do the work that we do and we can't thank you enough. If you at home would like to become a part of the Pittsburgh Opera family, please uh, feel free to check out pittsburghopera.org. Um, or you can take a look at this link below, uh, pittsburghopera.org slash give now, easy one click donation site. And um, we're, we're thrilled that we have that to offer everybody. Today, like I said, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, pull back the curtain, the place for smiles. But today is really special because we are getting the chance to visit with not one, but two um, husband and wife team here in Pittsburgh um, who uh, are celebrated in the artistic community here at Pittsburgh Opera and well beyond. So let me move a few things around and um, bring them into the stream as I introduce them. Um, but so we are thrilled to have with us today Pittsburgh Opera Managing Director Bill Powers and his wife, international soprano and Carnegie Mellon voice faculty member, Shari Gruber. Are you guys there? Can you hear me? We can hear you. We can see your smile, Rob. Ah, that's exciting. Technology. Um, thank you guys so much for being here today. It's always fun to uh, talk to you. And, and I, I, Shari, I haven't seen you in months. Um, Bill, I sort of see you pseudo electronically on a fairly regular basis. Um, those who don't know out there in the in the internet world, Bill and I are colleagues here at Pittsburgh Opera. We work together on a pretty pretty uh, daily basis, I would say. <laughs> That's probably an understatement. <laughs> um, I'm just jumping in here and talking a little bit about where we are in the world right now and 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 how hard it's been. But what is it like at the Powers household? What is the dynamic, Bill? You in our pre-show yesterday, you you sort of talked about um, kind of the the three tier. Uh, powers household, if you will, and, and all the things, comings and goings. But tell us a little bit about how you guys are managing in this time. Uh, well, as I, as I mentioned, it was, it, it's been a bit like a virtual conservatory here at the uh, Powers household. Um, while I'm on the phone with uh, my colleague Rob Bolden on a regular basis, perhaps <laughs> at my home office, uh, Shari is, is up here at the piano um, uh, teaching virtual lessons and, and working with colleagues. And then up on the uh, second floor, our daughter um, has spent a lot of the summer doing um, virtual uh, programs with ballet companies uh, throughout the country. So we have uh, several tiers going on here that's kept us very busy. Um, it's allowed the arts to continue to be a part of our life uh, while we're, we're uh, self-isolating here um, and to continue to um, utilize the arts and, and express them you know, with the people uh, through you know, virtual means. Yeah. Never dull here. It seems like we're this little interwoven puzzle piece that happens all day long, uh, starting at about eight in the morning. There's generally some thing being scheduled somewhere in the house that has to demand silence, or we have to be conscious of each other. Uh, and then we always have the thunk, thunk, thunk of Catherine on point in her room, making dents in her wooden floor. I love it. I love it. Well, never a dull moment, like you said. But I also think that it's it's incredible in this time, the fact that we have all this technology that we can still get all of this done. Um, and and yours being probably one of the more busy, multifaceted artistic households in the neighborhood, I would venture to say. Um, but Shari, I want to pivot to you just quickly because uh, not only are you um, obviously faculty member at Carnegie Mellon, but you are also an international soprano uh, who has sung all over the world as well as with Pittsburgh Opera. Um, 
If you don't mind, I'd love to share a quick clip from uh, our most recent Boem. If uh, I'd love to bring that in, just a little taste of um, of Shari here. Give me one second. Let me bring this into the stream, and uh, let's take a look at that. I'm gonna mute a few people here, and then we'll just take a quick listen to this. Just a little taste of Shari Gruber magic here with Pittsburgh <laughs> Opera. But Shari, in all seriousness, um, tell us a little bit of how this has affected you and, and um, your, your singing, your career, and, uh, and, and how it's all affecting you in this time. Well, uh, I mean, I think every performer is feeling the same way that I'm feeling in the sense that we're not getting to go out and perform um, live in an acoustic space or even an amplified space, depending on what medium you're singing in, to a live audience. And I think we all miss that terribly. I find myself um, at one point uh, having lost several concert contracts, um, just missing being around live music and having that kind of go through, vibrating through my body. Um, I was supposed to do my very first uh, uh, Richard Strauss Four Last Songs with uh, Larry Lowe up in Syracuse yeah. with his uh, wonderful Symphoria Orchestra. And unfortunately that had to get canceled in mid-May. And um, I was so looking forward to just feeling that entire orchestra um, and getting to work with those wonderful colleagues and, you know, I also had some recital things that were canceled and a concert in Texas. And, you know, I, I feel like all of our, um, our colleagues uh, in the singing world are going through a very similar, very painful time because we, we are driven to sing and it's a calling. And suddenly we can't do that in the way that we do as a public service almost. And it's, it's very hard to negotiate all of that emotionally. And yet I, I find, um, you know, myself hoping that there will be some wonderful innovations that come out of this period when we cannot be live in front of people and live singing with our colleagues. I look forward to that actually, because uh, it's necessity at the moment. And, um, you know, I, I know you guys have some things up your sleeves. So, you know, it's, I, I look forward to seeing what happens. It's an, another way of creating um, something that is meaningful to people using this art form that we have as opera or musical theater or whatever we may be singing in. But I, I'm not alone and uh, many of us are banding together in a wonderful community uh, on Facebook and in other forums to just support each other and we feel each other's losses. And it's a wonderful thing to know that there's a family to fall back on in that way. Indeed. You know, one of the things I'd be curious too, um, before we get to some of the activities that Pittsburgh Opera is doing to sort of lift up our spirits and, and bring some of this art form to the community, but Shari, I'd love to hear a little bit about in, in your teaching now, how are you keeping, how are you keeping these young singers who are aspiring into this art form, how are you keeping them afloat? And, and are you finding different ways to inspire? Um, and, and I'd love to hear a little bit about that in terms of this, crucial time when it's not normal. I'd love to hear how you're, how you're continuing to inspire the next generation. Well, I think a lot of people, um, a lot of singers, particularly if, you know, whether they're on the young end of things and just kind of starting out at, on the, you know, freshman and, and sophomore in college, or if they've already finished their masters and are kind of going out into the young artist program um, kind of scenario, or even slightly beyond that, it is an excellent time to work on your technique. Many times when you are just starting out, there's so many things coming at you from so many different directions and you constantly feel like you can't balance everything. Well, now is a great time to really, really get the technique ironed out. 
I think the thing that's hard right now is that we don't exactly know when this is all going to be able to go live again. Right. Um, and so, you know, trying very hard to, to let them know that it will happen again. It may look different than what they had originally envisioned, i.e. we're going to be perhaps staying with online format at least for a while. And how do we do that? And how do we make that exciting? Um, mm-hmm. Then when we do go back to the audiences, like how do we really have our teeth together? How do we relate to people again? How do we, uh, as, you know, in the audience, um, and really making that, a, making this quiet time, a time to really hone the craft in a way that we never get a chance to. There's so much noise the rest of the, our, the time in our lives mm-hmm. and in our studies. So um, what can seem like a tremendous deficit, I'm trying very hard in my own practice as well as with my students to look at it as a positive that doesn't come along very often. We never have times in our lives when things are going where we don't have anything planned for the day. Well, now we do. And yeah. what do we do with that time? Are you going to sit there and scroll through Facebook? Well, maybe. <laughs> you know? but, um, but also, you know, what do you do that's constructive? Because you don't get this kind of time back and you never have this kind of amassed time again. So make the most of it. Yeah, I've heard that from um, a lot of colleagues. They say that's a common question on a lot of these online conversations. And a lot of people are saying, well, I'm digging into role study or I'm, you know, I'm brushing up on my languages. But, um, you know, really kudos to, to you and everyone else, you know, who are keeping keeping that art form and, and the mentorship that is really required for that next generation and not letting that sag. I think it's a it's a good message. And to your point, when we do come back, what is that going to look like? Is it is it online? What is the technology? Um, and and fortunately, um, on our side, on on the Pittsburgh Opera side, um, it's a sort of a perfect seg- segue to talk a little bit about some of the activities, Bill, that Pittsburgh Opera has been engaged in. And I'd specifically like to talk a little bit about the project that Heartwood Acres uh, a few weeks ago that that was. Um, really beautiful. I, I think in, in the grand scheme of things and trying to get the art form out there was really beautiful. And um, I, I pulled up a few images from that day and I'd love to sort of bring them up. We can kind of look at them together and scroll through them. Let me find them here in the stream. And, um, you know, but I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear a little bit about that experience for you, uh, for the artists, some of our current and past resident artists and, and you know, what that all meant you know, during the day. But here, let's uh, let's take a look at, you know, we can take a look at some of these photos as we go through. But um, you can see just what's going on here. But feel free to jump in. Uh, well, thanks, Rob. Um, as you know, uh, we typically have a parks concert each season uh, through the Allegheny County uh, you know, Special Events uh, Office, and 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 this year they were they were canceled because of the pandemic. But they they got creative, and they uh, through some sponsorships were able to get some airtime on the CW and and uh, the television station, and so they invite us out to Hartwood Acres. Um, to essentially film, to pre-film um, uh, about 20 minutes worth of, of arias and ensembles. So we brought out uh, three of our very talented resident artists, Yazid Gray, um, Caitlin Gautamer, uh, and Antonia Botti-Lorovico. And you can see there we were in the mansion um, and trying to stay socially distanced uh, from each other, uh, wearing our masks and creating kind of the staging. In this case, it looked like for Mozart's La Ci Darem La Mano. Uh, and um, they filmed it at a, at a very um, uh, safe distance uh, and they compiled this wonderful um, uh, program of those arias and it was really great. And I think as, as Shari mentioned, that it, it was fantastic talking with the singers because they were just so thrilled and delighted to sing again. Um, we did everything through masks, uh, including the rehearsals and the staging that we did. Um, but once we went to film, um, we uh, we obviously took off the mask. There's our wonderful uh, Mark Trofka, member of our music staff. He too was masked uh, throughout the whole period. So we took very, very safe precautions in all of this, being inside with the camera crew, with the resident artist to try to pull this off and 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 grateful to you and to those who watched it. And, and we received some wonderful feedback. Indeed, and you can see the complexity, especially in a photo like this, to capture, uh, you know, in this day and age, what we what we're doing and what other people are doing. You can you can see this this complexity, but it really it paid off. And you know, and here's a beautiful shot 
you know, of this mansion and the setting that it was in. And this last shot, and let it not be said that Bill Powers is one of the hardest working men in show business. Here he is moving a <laughs> keyboard. So I just, I throw that in there, but it really was, I think, really meaningful for these resident artists and for the community to, to be able to offer that. Um, and, and I thought a really beautiful, uh, really beautiful offering. That being said, uh, I'd love for you to touch on a little bit about what, what Pittsburgh Opera is planning for the coming season as well. Um, we had a major pivot. We've talked about it on the show a few times, but I'd love to you know, get your perspective as well. Well, I, I, I know you had a wonderful conversation with Christopher um, a few weeks ago uh, about it. And, and um, you know, we have this, this ambitious and enterprising and I think bold uh, endeavor to continue to keep the art form um, uh, alive during this time. Uh, fortunately, we have a tremendous um, uh, resident artist program uh, that allows us to have seven um, uh, singers and one stage director, six singers and one stage director with us during this time and create essentially a pod of artists that we will utilize um, for these particular um, events and, and programs and shows. And, and now, as you could imagine, it's, it's all about um, creating a safe and as healthy an environment for them to flourish and thrive. We believe we can continue to provide the great training that our music staff and that you and, and our staff uh, provide to them uh, throughout the course of the year. Um, but the, the big goal is to do it in as safe and as wonder and, and as healthy and as, as um, cognizant of all the circumstances as we can. And, and I think the good news is that there's some examples of opera companies out there that have done it uh, and mm -hmm. they've done it successfully. So uh, we're looking to them and talking to our colleagues and finding out those things that worked and the things that they needed to tweak so that in about a week's time or so when our resident artists arrive and they, they go through their quarantine period uh, and finally are able to come into the building, we've done everything we can and looked at everything we can to, to keep them safe and then then give them the benefit of the wonderful training that that this company, that Pittsburgh Opera, so uniquely provides them. Yeah, no, I think it's a it's a it's a very fortunate set of circumstances because we do have that core that core group. Um, Shari, just another question with regard to teaching, mentorship, and all of those things. You teach both, you know, at the collegiate level at at Carnegie Mellon University, but you often um, you often teach some of the resident artists uh, as they come and go. And how do you feel, uh, I mean, what is that experience like, um, you know, as you teach, you know, from that collegiate level onto the sort of pre-professional level and, and getting to watch those singers progress in some cases? I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, how you approach all of that while you're, you know, especially in this time, but just in general as being a mentor for, for a lot of these singers. Hard at the very beginning of working with any singer to let them know that they already know how to do this and I'm really just the Sherpa up the mountain so you know really kind of putting the power back in their court because everyone is born knowing how to sing we learn how to sing as a way of learning how to talk so this is something that's so fundamental to our human being um, and obviously in opera we develop it into kind of an Olympic sport um, so but it's very easy to give power away. So regardless of which level the singer finds themselves um, in, I do want to let them know that they already have the capacity to do all of this. Now within that, we have to develop musculature and all those things, but it's really profoundly a, a simple thing, the desire to sing and communicate a story or a feeling um, and to be surrounded by beautiful music. So working from that standpoint, when the, it's a younger singer, you come at them exactly where they are. When it's a singer who is ready to break onto the, the professional scene, you come at, at them where they are. Um, and there's always something fundamental to work on and there's always something um, more sophisticated to work on. It really, you know, and I work on, on both with every level of singer and it's actually something that keeps it really um, inspiring for me because I've had some of the most amazing celebrations um, with singers when they've conquered something or they've reclaimed something that had been lost to them before. And you could be an incredibly, you know, like um, a, someone who's achieved a lot already in their young career, or you could be learning how to put your vocal cords together for the first time in a voice lesson and you can have a major breakthrough. I yeah. celebrate victories small and large regardless. So, you know, and I do it for musical theater as well. I do a fair amount of musical theater um, teaching as well. And it's, it's singing is singing. 
Yeah. And Bill, uh, those who, who some know, but those who don't, you work intimately with our resident artists from um, audition through mentorship. And, you know, this is, uh, again, as I said earlier, a very unique situation this coming year. Um, you know, we've got this core group of singers. Are you, are you approaching this season potentially any different in terms of working with them than maybe you have in the past when they're working shoulder to shoulder with guests and or in smaller roles. In this case, they're taking on basically all the roles for the season. And, um, you know, that changes our dynamic, I think a little bit here too. And I, you know, so I'm, I'm curious if that changes yours. Uh, no, I think it's the same fundamental approach. I think you're absolutely right. It's a really nice opportunity uh, for them to to have uh, roles in, in uh, most of the productions uh, that we're doing throughout the course of the year so that they get that experience um, of, of learning and growing within those roles and working with uh, Maestro Walker and our fantastic music staff and with you and with me and with and, and Christopher and others um, towards uh, um, figuring out the best way to do that because that is in essence um, when they get out into the profession, what they're endeavoring to do. So to go through that in a training program that is safe and nurturing, like we are, I believe, um, that will give them uh, that that sort of practical experience um, in that way. Uh, you know, obviously from audition standpoint, um, you know, it makes things tricky this year. Uh, we, we are um, working with actually a number of other companies, major companies in the country to kind of create a consortium uh, among us to create kind of an audition process, a virtual audition process that allows for the singer kind of an opportunity not to make so many videos or to have to input so mm -hmm. many different things for different companies so that we can create a more consistent experience for them, a little bit more financially feasible uh, and so forth. So that um, I'm very proud that, that Pittsburgh Opera is working with our colleagues at Houston, Minnesota and Washington and, and Atlanta and, and, and others, uh, Utah, to create this consortium that that will allow singers interested in coming to our resident artist program to have a, a means to do that but but this year most of it will be virtual um as we ensure that you know traveling and 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 being in small spaces in, in new york um are avoided it's a tough time it is a tough time before we sign off um last thing i'd love to just touch on neither of you are native pittsburghers um but you have been here for many years and um in general, but especially during this time, I'd love to get both of your takes on the 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 community, the arts community, especially in Pittsburgh, and and really in the good times, even in this time, what that means and how I find it to be special. I am from here and sort of came up through um, some of those channels, but I'd love to hear your take on it and um, and and you know what this community does and and how the arts function within it. Well, I, I, I feel like the art community here is so tight knit and whether you're a performer or an administrator or someone who works backstage or someone who comes to enjoy performances, I think we are all supporting each other through this time, even if it's not something where we have direct contact with each other all the time. We know that there is this vibrant, tight knit, very, very solid community um, here of people who love the arts, of people who are financially as in terms of careers tied to the arts uh, and we I think we're all really looking forward to getting back and being live again and I think you see that in a number of initiatives with people you know continuing to perform um, for this medium um, you know I, it's so interesting to watch with at the Hartwood Acres program watch what the ballet did actually staging on the grounds of Hartwood Acre and um, I spoke to a friend of mine who is a soloist with uh, the company and he was so thrilled to see what we were doing with the opera company and um, you know I, I, we're all supportive of each other so I'm sure that once we can actually get back in the theater safely um, you will all be happy to support each other in person again I know I'm dying to go and support people singing live again and I can't wait to sing live again myself I'm sure Bill feels very similarly but um, I can't wait Bill to see can't my wait colleagues to sing again. do the same. Yeah, I think my singing live is probably not what it's you're dead. after, but, um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's a great question, Robin. And, and I think one of the things coming out here, you know, you heard was, okay, everyone, you hear Pittsburgh, you think sports, and everyone after that talks about the arts. And, and I think when I was spending a lot of time out here initially, that was very, very true. Uh, which is a real testament to the community here and the arts community here. Um, you know, we've, we've 
been here now well over a decade. We've made this our, our home, our artistic home in that way. And I think it's because uh, this community makes it very easy to do so. Uh, the, the opera's been, and the symphony has been very supportive of, of Shari and, and she's worked with Maestro Hanek and, and with Maestro Walker and then Pittsburgh Opera. Uh, interestingly enough, I mean, Shari's first engagement out here in, in Pittsburgh prior to our moving out here was in 2006. She sang Despina um, in, in the Cozy Fantute that year and she was uh, nine months pregnant with our daughter. Uh, and ah. who knew that shortly thereafter, uh, we'd be moving out here to make, to make this our home. But I think, um, as you well know, as a native Pittsburgher raising now, congratulations, your own uh, child creating a future art supporter. Uh, we're also pleased and delighted. Um, Thank you. That, that uh, this community makes it easy. The, the, the patrons and um, the, uh, the donors make it feel like family. Uh, they invest their, their money and their souls and their artistic interest into all the organizations here. And I also think there's a really nice um, uh, connection and, and uh, synergy among the arts organizations. We talk to each other. We want to celebrate each other. We want to find synchronistic things we can do together um, that uh, share uh, the great artistic resources of this, com of this uh, city. So um, I, I, I think that there's any, any uh, sort of statement as to why we stayed so long in a way uh, went after moving out here, it was because of all of those circumstances. Yeah, no, it's true. And, and you know, one of, our, one of our dear Pittsburgh Opera family, Amy Kalman, we can't wait either, she says. Uh, we know it, Amy. We're, we can't either. We can't wait to get back on that stage. I can imagine, um, not, to, not to leave her out of this, this live stream, but Catherine must be chomping at the bit to to get back on on point and dance and and be with her her core and all of those things so but um, what a what a special time though that having two parents in the arts she is such an artist herself and to be you know celebrating you know together and, and having that togetherness um, you know during this time as well so um, well, Bill and Shari, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's been great catching up. It's been great talking <laughs> to you in this way. Shari, it's lovely to see you. It's been an age. Um, and thank you, Rob, for having us on. And congratulations to you and Jill for what I imagine up to this date is probably your best production uh, <laughs> that you've experienced. So um, enjoy it. Uh, I stand up and applaud you both. Um, but I leave the camera angle, so won't. But I applaud you both anyway. Standing ovation, bravi tutti, and and thank you again for having us on in uh, on the series. And we we all look forward. I know you do. Uh, we do personally and professionally. And I can say on behalf of Pittsburgh Opera, we're we're eager to get back to it. Uh, we want everyone to stay safe and healthy during this time. Uh, take the steps we need. We want to do it responsibly. But boy, when we get back to it, I think it's going to be a celebration. I think so too. I, I keep telling people I can't imagine what that first ovation is going to feel like. Um, uh, better bring your Kleenex. Yeah. yeah, when that curtain comes down, proverbially, proverbially or literally, Indeed. I think it's going to be something. Indeed. So, Thank you both so much. Thanks for spending a little time with me today. And, um, you know, hopefully, well, Bill, I'm sure I'll see you soon virtually. And uh, I hope we see each other all in person soon. So thank you, Rob. Thank absolutely. You. Be well. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Tell Bye. Catherine we all said hello. Bye. That does it for another week of Pull Back the Curtain. Uh, thank you so much to Bill Powers and Shari Gruber for joining me today. It's always a pleasure to speak, um, to talk with them and talk with all our guests over these past few weeks, checking in, seeing how everybody's doing and uh, just checking in with our, our community and, and moving forward through all of this. Just something else that we're just looking uh, for ways to connect. And that's really what this is about at the end of the day. Speaking of which, we have a few more weeks of Pull Back the Curtain, um, at least in this iteration, coming up. Join me next week. Uh, we're going to have an opportunity to sit down with our concert master, Charles Stegman, and his wife, assistant concert master, Rachel Stegman, and talk about uh, their role in the pit, their role in Pittsburgh music making. Charles has just celebrated his 30th season as the concert master of Pittsburgh Opera. And in just a few weeks, on September 13th, uh, we will be introducing the new class of Pittsburgh Opera resident artists. So you won't want to miss that. Check, uh, check our Facebook, our social media channels for more information, as well as pittsburghopera.org. 
Thank you so much to Eaton Park once again, the place for smiles. Uh, I hope this brought a smile to your face today. We really enjoyed having you with us um, and always have a great week. Be safe, stay well, and we will see you next week. Take care.